because the war, war was uh, 942, um, Hitler was, had such a disastrous campaign against Russia that in 42, with a couple of strategic um, moves, the war would have ended. And of course, tribulation wouldn't finish until the beginning of 1945. I, I'm, I'm talking about the, mur the murdering of people. Yeah. And of course, the Pentagon's part of that system. So the Pentagon had to um, elongate World War II by a full two years before that was all finished. So the the, the amount of blood on the hands of um, you know, Bush, Eisenhower, and all these people, um, Dulles. But the point I'm making is, when you're dealing with madness, when you're dealing with insanity, uh, is do they need a reason? Do they need a rationale? No. I mean, th th these people, what they did was, um, when they realised by the 1970s that the breakout of the uh, of the ghettos, the smashing of the covenant was a terrible, terrible mistake. They weren't going to get people back in the ghettos. So what they devised is a planet ghetto. They were going to they were going to teach us all in the same manner that they used to teach their own. So the way they teach their own is through cognitive trauma. You know, expose them to horrors, then fill them full of mind viruses. Well, that's what they've been doing from the late 70s. So from the 70s, 80s and 90s and the, and the zeros, it's all been clawing back to effectively a, a model as if we were living in a, a Talmudic ghetto. I, I just think that the system perpetuates. And on the timeline I said to you about events coming up, I don't see them uh, changing an inch. In fact, I don't see any of these people waking up to 30 seconds when the door gets smashed down and they're dragged out and hung from a lamppost. So I think there's probably going to be about a minute and a half where they go, oh shit. But up until then, no seriously, they are that mentally ill that they will not know until those final moments. Until then, it's game on. And you know, I've heard all kind of arguments that you know they, they want to collapse the system. They don't want to collapse the system. Do they want to change the currencies? Yes, they do. Absolutely. Why? Because they're not working. They're not working. But they're not, they're not collapsing the system. But for them, the system is perfectly fine. What they're looking for is, how in the hell do we get out of this mess? That's their problem. And at the moment, if you look at what's taking place in Greece, what's taking place in America, look, they wanted to get onto a gold standard and issue... You know, a few hundred billion dollars in, in, in new currencies, a brand new currency. Look, will look would have looked the same in America, but was was based on the gold standard. They wanted to do that um, two years ago, and then last year, and they were stopped. You know, the new Benjamin Franklin notes that had the gold bell on them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was gold standard. That was gold backed currency. The stuff that they say we should all go back onto, and they got stopped. So, look. Um, Greg, there's no way to rationalise madness. Madness is what madness does, and uh, until until they either people um, cure them or they get run out of town, uh, they're not going to change. Okay? Uh, you're exactly right. The, the Greeks, I'm, uh, my brother who, who's failing to see that the bar association is finished, he's in trial this week. Um, he, he acknowledged that Papandreou, the third generation Greek dictator, he thinks he's going to stay in power and he has no idea that this guy's already done. And, um, and then the other thing is my dad was with Patton from the North Africa campaign against Rommel all the mm -hmm. way up through the mm -hmm. Battle of the Bulge. And that war should have been ended because Patton was moving so fast he would have been in Germany mm -hmm. in less than a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and, and, but yeah, they, they, hadn't killed, they hadn't killed six million Menashe. Uh-huh. Remember the, the 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 lists that you see published in Berlin are the are the real people who um, have taken the identities that are the families today and the the Menashe, the original uh, people who hold the rights over the covenant, the Talmud, they're the ones murdered by these um, Khazarian Sabbateans. So it was a giant identity theft. The, the, they hadn't killed enough of the Russian 
Hungarian and other Menashe Orthodox to um, to get up to their magic number of six million. And these are I'm talking about the Sabbatean Khazars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know who you speak of. Well, thank you very much, and I thank you for letting us see clearly that this is their fear they keep trying to put on us, and you know the earth is going through the changes as it needs to. Um, we can we can take this concept of fear that you taught on over the last couple of weeks and and use it as a positive thing to uh, to put <laughs> what they had us living in fear in back on on the path. Well, that we, well, well, I just want to let everyone know on the call, okay, that um, contrary to to the, the ruling elite, the Earth is not uh, psychopathic. Okay, the Earth is is benevolent, but you've got to understand. People need to understand that the Earth is not a passive observer here, nor is the other side. They are giving they are getting every single warning that you would expect a benevolent force to give, but don't expect the Earth nor the other side to sit back. And if you want to talk about uh, the fight back from Judgment Day, I'll just give you a few. And it doesn't need to be that spectacular. It's called sleep. Every night, every one of us need to sleep. If we don't sleep, we die. That includes all these mad people. Okay? Sleep means you re-engage. doesn't mean you wake up again. So they're going to be pretty, from Judgment Day onwards, they're going to have problems with sleep. They're going to have problems with choking on the food. They're going to have problems with bacteria. They're going to have problems with viruses. They're going to have problems with fungus. They're going to have problems with um, all kinds of different things appearing on them specifically. Not us, on them. And, and all I can say is God help the mad families that refuse to wake up because not me, but the world and the universe at large is bearing down on you. And as, as it is said in a thing called mandamus on one heaven, your soul will be torn from your body one way or the other. This is coming to an end. So thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. I really appreciate it. So they have a last right. opportunity for metanoia. Thank All right. you, Frank. Thank you, All right, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Okay, uh, this is a, a really good question. <laughs> um, to to uh, not sure if you're ready to finish up yet, Frank, but this is a I question am. here from the chat. Uh, will you please talk about your thoughts on spiritual gravity? Uh, the conversation that we, we were just having, or you were just having with Greg. Uh, I think that's a really good question too. Uh, yeah, I, I I really like the, the the wording spiritual gravity. That's an excellent excellent description. What it is is that. Um, every one of you on this call and everyone that will be listening to the call have unlimited potential to not only change your own destiny but to change the destiny of the planet. The, the challenge is how to harness that. And none of us coming to tonight comes as some kind of perfect being. I'm far from perfect. I mean, I've got, <laughs> I snore, you know, I eat too much chocolate. We all have, we all have faults. Uh, so the challenge is how to keep our minds, plural, uh, our spirits, plural, our wills, plural, uh, aligned, and how to then connect together in that aligned state of mind. Because when, when we can find that moment of balance, and that knowing and when we can do it with the right intention then we literally we literally can manifest uh, miracles so spiritual gravity if I take that the the description of the question and if I carry on from what I was talking to with with Greg the exciting thing is as you as each of you um, find balance find reason for everything you've gone through uh, see answers to your questions, share that knowledge, whether or not you describe it as you cater. I mean, I, 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 I never ask, and I don't want you to ever say, you know, this is not branded. This is not like selling a, you know, soap. You don't have to say everything as you cater. It's not, it's, that's just a label. But when you share your life yourself with others, when you connect with others, when you 
live in respect, when you meditate and pray, when you come together, where you take responsibility for your own life and when you view a bigger intent, then that is rippling. It's rippling not just on this physical plane, but it's rippling in the spiritual plane. And that's happening. It's happening whether people even know of Eucadia or not at the moment. And you're seeing it in the streets of Spain, Greece, Portugal, Italy, London, England, all around the world. People are waking up and they're waking up despite the media, despite culture, not because of it. So that to me is a sign that we're witnessing a manifestly greater spiritual gravity on this planet and it is affecting our destiny so we're part of that uh, let's embrace it and, and let's move forward and and uh, if we live another day I give thanks if we die well we die but uh, we never give up and I will never give up thank you well, it's like Ray was saying is that uh, you know the past is what we can glean wisdom and knowledge from to share and uh, move forward in, in a different age, in the age of love and forgiveness. And, and that's what will bring everyone together. And that's also something that helps wake people up as we share the wisdom and knowledge of the past. Well, exactly. As, as I've said, and I, and, I, and I really mean this, for all the people that monitor our calls and monitor our uh, discussions, um, I don't see anyone that belongs to an alphabetical alphabetic agent as, a, as, a, as an enemy. I don't consider anyone that's in a ruling family as an enemy. I don't consider anyone in the Vatican as an enemy. My issue is with the ideas, with the mind viruses. And, uh, you know, I, I, I see my fellow men and women as extensions of me. The reason they exist, and this is something that was shared to me with Gerald, and this is a, a, a wild concept. I'll leave this thought with you. The reason the Vatican exists, the reason the CIA and the FBI exist, is because of me they exist because I allow them to exist they exist because I manifested my fears in this life and the previous and the reason that they will dissipate is because I have visualized that they are no longer needed so we each say that and then and and then we each act on that and as would be an amazing thing to see happen. I take responsibility, exactly. I take responsibility for the way the world is because of me. And I visualize the way the world is and will be because I have taken responsibility of that vision. And if every one of us do that by taking responsibility, then the world will continue to change. It will accelerate. The change will accelerate. Okay? Absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, Frank. Uh, I think we can wrap up with that. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks so much, Terry. Thanks to everyone who listened. Thanks to everyone who will be downloading the call. And, and yes, I'll be here next week, God willing. All right. Well, thank you for staying extra and answering these extra questions and wonderful discussion. We appreciate everyone for joining us tonight and those that will listen later. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone next week. Same time, same place. Great. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. You're welcome. Good night.